Hi, I'm Perry West, founder and president of Automated Vision Systems. You probably know that machine vision starts with light. So clearly you have to have an understanding of light to be effective in machine vision. This is the first of four videos that will give you that understanding. It discusses the question, what is light? Subsequent videos will discuss the properties of light, how light acts with materials, and finally advanced details on the behavior of light that you're going to find useful in machine vision. So let's get started. In this video we explore what is light and we ask the questions, is it a wave? Is it a particle? Is it a ray? Well, the short answer to those questions is yes, and not really, and well, no, but we use it that way. So let's get into more detail. First, let's ask the question, is light a wave? Well, you know that light is electromagnetic energy, and electromagnetic energy can only exist as a wave. So light is a wave. It has an electric field, and at right angles to that, it has a magnetic field. For simplicity in optics, we usually represent only the electric field. There are properties of light as a wave that we should examine. The first is that light travels with a speed. Traditionally, this has been represented by the lowercase letter c, and is roughly 300 million meters per second in a vacuum. In a material such as water or glass, light actually slows down. We'll talk about this in a later section. The other characteristic that we should look at is that light has a frequency, and this frequency, typically represented by the Greek letter nu, is approximately 5.4 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now, it depends on exactly the color of the light. And again, we'll talk about the spectrum later. And finally, light has a certain wavelength, and this is around 450 nanometers. The speed of light, its wavelength, and frequency are all interrelated. Now, we can talk about light by its frequency, or we can refer to it by its wavelength. Most commonly, we refer to light by its wavelength. Next, let's look at light as a photon. The photon has energy, but no mass, so it's not a real particle. It's more like the smallest spurt of light energy that can exist. And we can relate the photon's energy back to its wavelength or frequency using Planck's constant, which is conventionally represented by the lowercase h. Before we leave the photon, let's take a look at one characteristic that's very important. You must have noticed that the energy of a photon is inversely proportional to its wavelength. That means if we have a photon of, say, 350 nanometer wavelength, it will have twice the energy of a photon at 700 nanometer wavelength. Put another way, if we have two light sources giving us equal amounts of light energy, the one at 350 nanometer wavelength will have only half the number of photons as the one at 700 nanometer wavelength. This will become very important to us when we discuss sensing light. Our final question is, does light exist as a ray? Well, no, there is no such thing as a light ray. Light can exist as a beam or even a tightly focused beam. However, the concept of light rays is a very important one in optical system design. It's used to denote how the light, or more specifically the wavefronts, are moving through an optical system. Doing light ray tracing is the most common and powerful technique for designing optical systems and lenses. As our final investigation into what is light, we'll take a look at the spectrum, the whole gamut of wavelengths and frequencies. One strict definition of light is that electromagnetic radiation that is visible. However, what we see is that represents only a 
tiny fraction of the total electromagnetic spectrum. So we'll broaden our definition of light to say wherever light can have its dual nature of being both a wave and a photon. This tends to eliminate the lower frequencies where the photon energy would be so small as to be impractical to use. This also tends to eliminate the short wavelength where the photon energy is very high, but the frequency is so high that it again is impractical to use. So this region that covers the infrared, visible, and ultraviolet regions of the electromagnetic spectrum are really the area that we'll call light for our purposes. Let's summarize what you have learned. You've learned that light is a wave, electromagnetic energy, and that the wave has a speed, a frequency, and wavelength that are interrelated. You know that light is a photon. It's not really a particle. A photon is just a tiny bit or quanta of light, the smallest piece of light that can exist. And thus light has a dual nature, both a wave and a photon. And you know that light isn't a ray, but that we use rays to tell us where light is going when we design optical systems. So now you're ready to look at the next video on the properties of light.